Welcome back to The Rock. Drivers getting ready, strapped into their race cars as we're getting ready for today's main events, Rocky Road. Definitely, when you come to The Rock, we're always going to talk about the racing surface here at this racetrack. As well as, in this series, we've got to talk about youth versus experience and how that will play out today for 200 laps. Hello, everyone. Once again, it's Rick Allen, Phil Parsons, and Michael Waltrip with you. Now, let's talk a little bit about this racing surface. We call it a rocky road. Limited tires here make this a, a strategy racetrack. It certainly is, and these drivers will face something that they probably will not face anywhere else this season. When they start this race, 25, 30 laps and they'll be running two and a half to three seconds slower than what they can on new tires. And that's something they really have to work on. I was talking to Ryan Blaney who tested here and he said he went out and made two 25 lap runs. He went out and ran really fast the first part of the first run, but really slow the last 10 laps. He slowed down a little bit on the first five laps of the second run, and he was faster for the last 10 or 12 laps on the second run. So you have to manage that. And again, you have a limited amount of tires in the pit, so the crew chiefs have to make a call. Do we put tires on at 25 laps, or do we wait and try to get 50 laps out of them? They only have three sets in the pits. It's going to be a challenge. How important is youth versus experience at a place like The Rock? Well, the first four qualifiers, age average is 20. So obviously, <laughs> to go fast, Young is fine. Right. But like Phil said, you've got to manage your tires. And I'd like to think that's going to be important today. But remember a year ago, Nelson Piquet come here, never seen the place before. He's a Formula One driver. You don't baby those things. You race them hard. He led the race a lot. So I don't know. It's a mix-up. I'm going for youth, Rick. <laughs> All right. Potentially youth getting to victory lane at the Rock. We're about to fire the engines. We go for the command now. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome back Rockingham Speedway President Andy Hillenberg. Drivers, start your engines! All right, fired up. Fired up. Bill Meek, hello. It's a great big smile on Andy Hillenberg's face. That's because the fans have once again responded and come out to the rock. We'll see the green flag when we return. Burton controlled the clip, but Johnny captured the clock. Happy birthday, And now Sauter's two for two as the trucks trek to the rock. He looks to hold off teammate Crafton and a slew of contenders at one of NASCAR's trickiest tracks. After the tight quarters of Martinsville, the trucks get wide open in Rockingham. The gang put on a show last year and looks to hammer down in race number three. Will a young blood take checkered, or does an old timer tame this old school track? The early season has more questions than answers. The big question today is who rolls at the rock? The NASCAR Camping World Truck Series is next from Rockingham. And welcome back to The Rock. The trucks are rolling around this mile racetrack. Very high banked racetrack here, an abrasive surface. It will take its toll on the tires. The stories that we'll be following today will be covered by Ray Dunlap and Hermie Sadler. Let's go trackside, Hermie. Well, Rick, James Busher has a chance also in the Camping World Truck Series to make history. We've never had a back to back champion. I'm one of those that thinks Busher has a great opportunity to do it. But to do so, he's got to pick it up. 13th and 14th place finishes to start the season. That won't cut it. He finished second here at Rockingham last year. He needs to go to victory lane, get his season turned around. Ray? Well, Hermie, you've already heard it multiple times on this show today that a really big part of history could be set right here at Rockingham Speedway if Johnny Sauter were to get to victory lane today. He and Mark Martin both have won the first two races in the Camping World Truck Series, but take a look at the other divisions in NASCAR. In Sprint Cup and Nationwide, some incredible names on this list of drivers who have also won race number one and number two, but never in the history of this sport has anybody won the first three in a row, and I believe Sauter has a really good shot at getting in the record books today. Thank you, Ray. The front row, very impressive with 
Burton and Busher making up row number one. The starting grid will roll across the top of the screen. Take a look at our Camping World track description. We've talked a little bit about how difficult this racetrack is on equipment. Yeah. And it's different, too. You can see turn one and two bank 22 degrees, three and four 25 degrees with a trial. Well, this racetrack is not the same from end to end. It's not concentric, and it's challenging. We talk about it, Michael. Three seconds fall off here. Yeah, you can see the race distance, 200 miles, purse uh, $436,000. That pit window is amazing, Phil. You can go 85 laps, but I don't want to. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Want tires as often as you can get them. But again, that is limited. All right, we are going to ride along with a few different drivers. Guys, take us through them. Let's hop in with Ron Hornaday. He rides along in the Smoky Mountain Herbal Snuff Chevrolet. He's sitting in the top 10 in points. Did an amazing job after a crash last week at Martinsville to rebound and finish in the top 10. We're also going to ride along with a guy that is going to set a record. I talked to Terry Cook, who holds a record now tied with Matt Crafton of 296 consecutive starts. And I said, what about what do you think about your record getting broke? He said, well, if I don't break his legs, he might break the record. But <laughs> you see Matt's in the truck right there. He's going to set the all time record and he will start his Menards Toyota from fifth. This is the kid the buzz is about you're looking at Ryan or excuse me, you're looking at uh, the 30 truck of Kyle Larson. He's from California. And man, has he been the talk of the town. He's got a fast truck. Will he get the win? We're also going to ride along with a young man that's going to be out starting from the pole with the Arrowhead Electronic Cigarette Chevrolet for Turner Scott Motorsports. It's two consecutive poles for Jeb Burton. He's going to try to get to victory lane for the first time. Jeb Burton chooses the inside line. He will have James Busher on his outside. Again, our defending series champion looking to break into the top 10 as far as finishes this year and get himself back in position for another championship. All in line behind Burton and Busher as they come to the green flag. We're back underway at the Rock. Look at that high line work. Wow, Busher drove hard down into turn one and comes off turn two with the lead. That's a little bit of that experience. Busher was here last year, finished in the second spot. Kyle Larson now battling for the third spot. On the outside, Chase Elliott in the 94. He runs the high line. One of the things that drivers love about this racetrack, multiple lines. You can go low, you can go high. You know, Rick, when we talk about the pace falling off three seconds, that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. We're going to Armstrong way up the hill, but even higher. Look at Ty Dillon on the outside. Wow. And you know what I love about this track, too, guys? The front straightaway, we are right on top of these trucks. You can really feel the speed. The fans are just sitting right next to the, to the fence, and the trucks fly by here at 150 miles an hour. That's thrilling. Let's ride along with Ron Hornaday right there in the ninth truck. He jumps to the inside of Dakota Armstrong to take over that spot. How about Ty Dillon right up against the fence already? Isn't that fun? Look at those trucks. Three wide spread out across the track. Looked like Dylan almost hit the wall off turn two, and it narrows up quite a bit off two, Phil. You can run the high line pretty well off four because the corner sweeps out of there, but you better be careful if you're up that high off two. Before Ty Dillon went out to qualify, I asked him, I said, how's your truck today? He said, I think it's really good. I said, are you going to run high to save your tires, or are you going to run low? He goes, well, the fastest way around this track is down at the bottom. I'm going to run down at the bottom. Yeah, Since yeah. the drop of the green flag, yeah. he's run up at the wall. He hasn't seen the bottom yet. Oh, we got to <laughs> spin down in turn two. That's Tyler Reddick, the 52 truck. He won the K&N race here last November. That's Kenny Schrader's truck. And Tyler Reddick making his first start in the Camping World trucks. Looks like he kept it out of that inside wall, Phil. Yeah, did a nice job doing yeah, that. Yeah, good shape. He was running in the 11 spot. That brings out our first caution. Well, this might be a little early to get tires. Welcome back, North Carolina Education Lottery 200 underway, but we are under caution. This is why. 52, 52 Tyler Reddick. He was running in the 11th spot, Mike, uh, Rick, and you can see several trucks uh, trying to get around him. This is from Ron Horner. Oh, oh, a little contact. Is that the three of Ty Dillon? It is. is. And uh, Reddick just came right down on Dillon. Horndate does an amazing job to get around the top. Hermy. Y'all say that's Ken Strader's truck. We talk, heard from Ken Strader earlier on the radio before the race started. He said it's going to be a little bit cool today, more grip. Maybe we can go five laps instead of three on a set of tires. Ever the comedian <laughs> is Ken Strader. And there's Kenny up high atop the grandstands here. You can see him giving direction there. You're using his hand signals there, talking to Tyler. Pace car is going to pull off the racetrack back in front. 
The 31 of James Busher on the inside. Jeb Burton on the outside. Green flag back in the air. We saw Busher make that high side work on Burton on the initial start of the race. Busher elected to start on the bottom, and he makes that work as well. Kyle Larson follows him down at the bottom of the racetrack up to the second spot. Jeb Burton falls back into third. We have three Turner Scott Motorsports trucks right now running first, second, and third. Boy, I love watching those trucks flare out when they get down to the banking, picking the low line or the high line, wherever they got to go where someone isn't running. That's the, that's the fast way around. And, People taking a lot of different lines. You see Brad Keselowski's trucks there side by side off turn two. See Ryan Blaney, the 29 on the inside. Joey Logano, the 19 on the outside. Here comes Johnny Sauter to the inside of Bubba Wallace. Johnny's in the 98, Bubba Wallace in the 54. We talked about Joe Shear and that truck being fast. He's going to work his way through this traffic. But, Phil, I think a guy like Johnny Sauter, he is pacing himself a little bit right now. He knows he's got to take care of those tires. So him marching slowly through the field is a good thing. If you're out front, though, it doesn't take a whole lot more uh, effort to lead the race. But when you're back in the traffic, if you start really burning your truck up trying to make passes, you can burn those tires right off. We talked about last week, Martinsville, how there was probably more give up on the tires than we'd seen there in a while. Johnny Sauter saved this stuff as we watch him racing three and four wide at the exit of turn four. And when it was time for him to go, he went. Still battling for position back here. That's about 17th, 18th, 19th. I mean, they're racing all over this racetrack, Rick. The first three, uh, two trucks have driven away. Jeb Burton's got a battle for third with Brendan gone, but what a... What a pack they have behind these guys. And look at Brendan running the high side. We know that's where he's most comfortable. Oh, yeah, that's yep. a huge shock for Brendan to be <laughs> up there. Brendan will run up against the wall at about any racetrack, with the exception of Martinsville. That last lap was already a second and a half slower than our pole, pole speed set by Jeb Burton. Already in just 10 laps into this race, 11 laps into the race, and we're already talking a second and a half fall off, which we see Brendan gone once again way up the racetrack in that 62. I think Brendan might be in line for a good day here. He likes this type of racetrack. Again, likes to run up high. And eventually, all these trucks, as we watch them three wide once again for a moment with a 17 of Timothy Peters, who right came down on pit road during that first caution period. Yeah, and Phil, he's way back in traffic right now, currently in 28th position. But Peters said to his crew chief, Butch Hilton, I am way too loose. No way can I hold on to it. So they came down and dropped the track bar two and a half rounds. Peters uh, put a little fuel in there, obviously no tires, but he was on pit road at lap five. James Busher down at the bottom of the racetrack. His teammate Kyle Larson trying that higher line, see if he can get some momentum build up and close the gap between the two. That uh, we talked about Kyle when we were riding along with him on the on board. Everybody in the garage area is talking about this 30 truck that it has better speed than than maybe the rest. So it'd be interesting to see Kyle Larson's a smart driver. He battled Kyle Busch door to door at Bristol in his first nationwide start there. Only lost by half a car length. Now this is his first truck start here at Rockingham. See if he can battle for this win. And it looks like right now he's faster than Busher. You know, I was talking to Michael Shelton. Actually, Rick and I were talking to Michael Shelton, crew chief for James Busher on pit road. And he said, with the four Turner Scott Motorsports trucks, three of them are very similar setup wise. The only one that's different is that 30 truck of Kyle Larson. They've got a little bit different setup. Something maybe they may be testing for the future. Looks pretty good so far. Looks to be working out well. Again, we see Kyle Larson run a little bit higher line. Then James Busher, Busher out in front. 30, 35. Larson's closed the gap now all over the back bumper. Again, running that second and third line is the 30 of Kyle Larson, and now has a little momentum as they work their way in front of the grandstands once again. Kyle's been able to chase him down. I look for him to be able to drive by James Busher here momentarily. Brendan gone up to the third spot right now, about a second, eight tenths of a second behind James Busher. Oh, uh, Kyle Larson can taste that lead, can he? He said, it's just right there. I'm, I'm running the high line. I believe I'm a little bit better than my teammate. Lead this baby early. You both talked a little bit about conserving your tires. To these two racing up front, is that counterproductive for the overall goal of what they're looking for? Well, you can watch, Rick, very closely that, 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 31 truck or the truck of 30 of Kyle Larson's, they're not sideways. They're not really dirt tracking off the turns. That's how you burn the rear tires off of them. You can hear the motor. He just steadily on the gas. No, no abrupt gas to the floorboard, and that allowed him to drive up on the outside, see if he can get by without hitting the lap truck.
Kyle Larson has the lead for just a moment. Then he has to slow down as Jennifer Joe Cobb on the high side sets the pick for the 31 of Busher. Busher back out front. Wow, now Kyle's going to try the bottom. Been up top the whole race, dives to the bottom. Can he make it work down there? Very strong truck for Kyle clear. Larson out in front here at the Rock. That was impressive there, Phil, the crossover move. And right now they're about two seconds slower than they were during qualifying. So Kyle Larson has taken over the top spot. Larson starting in the third position, now leading the pack at the Rock. Get your daily dose of NASCAR excitement tomorrow on The Hub. Our experts will break down the showdown from Texas. Plus, we've got special guest analysis. Driver, David Reagan. Don't miss NASCAR Race Hub. Tomorrow, 6 Eastern, only on speed. Out in front of the field, Kyle Larson beginning to put a few trucks a lap down. James Busher running second. Ringon is up to third. Chase Elliott fourth. And Jeff Burton in the top five. We saw Kyle Larson take the lead just before we went away to break, and he's already put over a second and a half now on the second place truck of James Butcher. Whatever that setup is, Michael, I believe it's working. I believe we'll adopt that across the whole family. What do you yeah, think? Absolutely. Probably learning a lot for that team. What a great organization Turner Scott is. They really use all their resources and, and spend uh, spend spend their money wisely because all trucks seem to run just as equal as the next and that's what you hope for as an owner with the multi-car team just outside of the top five that 98 of johnny sauter Herming. yeah rick tale of two stories for the full sport racing toyotas johnny sauter started 11th he's working right now old jet burton trying to make it to the top five been pretty quiet on the radio but he did say that he likes to work the bottom of the racetrack in the truck has good grip his teammate matt crafton not as fortunate his truck is too tight and he's slowly sliding back through the field right Hermie eric jones started in 36th position shotgun on the field today but he has done a great job of moving up by lap four he had gotten up to position 28 by lap 15 he was up to 22nd he's just grabbed one more he's up to 21st and he's closing in that group of joey coulter Caleb Holman and Max Gresham. Eric Jones shooting his way through the field. Of course, guys, it gets a little tougher from here forward. Yeah, competition a little stiffer when you get toward the front. But what an impressive start. You, you, you begin the race in last and drive up to the top 20, which is what uh, Jones is doing right now, racing with Caleb Holman and Max Gresham. Those are some good runs that he's making. You can see he clears Gresham there. That puts him in the top 20. So great start to the race for this young man. You know, we go to Daytona and say, okay, qualifying doesn't matter that much because you can win this race from anywhere. You don't typically think that at most other racetracks. But when you come to Rockingham, as long as you have a pretty decent truck, if you get a bad qualifying, lap there's plenty of room to pass here and Eric Jones is proving that there's Johnny Sauter talked about how, how strong I thought he would be today in our setup show tried to race into the top five looks like that truck he, he, we heard the guys in pit road talking that he likes the bottom and that's where Jeb Burton is running as well so you know we we talked you said Phil there's lots of room right, to move around, but when you got a favorite line and somebody takes it away from you passing still difficult these Clear trucks are really evenly matched and so Johnny's struggling to get around Jeb Jeff Burton again winning the pole and the track record here at the Rock yeah. earlier today. Start on the outside of row one on this restart. And now he's back to the fifth position. You see Johnny slipping those tires up off the corner. Talked about with a lot of trucks to pass. You really got to be careful. Oh, Ooh. that's going to tighten up. Raised the down on the 0-7 of Johnny Chapman. Heads up move by Johnny, Johnny Chapman to realize those guys were coming in there side by side. And he backed off and actually drove down on the apron to give Johnny room to get to the outside. These two are battling side by side and not too far up ahead. You saw that white truck just going out of frame. That's Chase Elliott. So even though they're racing each other, that uh, the lead group, other than Kyle Larson, aren't really getting away from these guys. And Brendan Gaughan has taken second away from James Busher, but Brendan Gaughan is still three seconds back from Kyle Larson. So Larson setting a blistering pace, similar to what we saw out of Nelson PK a year ago at this racetrack. That's exactly right. The good news for Brendan, though, he was the fastest truck on the racetrack that last lap. About a tenth of a second faster than Kyle Larson. Again, long way to go. We were 34 laps into this thing. I think now we're in a window that if they pit, I think they would put tires on now. 25, most of the crew chiefs were talking too soon, but now we're rapidly approaching 35 laps, and I think they'll all put them on if the caution were to come out. And we talked about the pit window for fuel being in the 75 to 85 lap range. That might be a little bit 
shorter than that because of the qualifying laps that were run earlier today. Believe me, these drivers will be crying for tires before we get to lap 75. Brendan Gaughan making the move, trying to get a little bit closer to that 30 of Kyle Larson that's leading this and gone way up the racetrack once again. Haven't seen him too close to the yellow line. No, he doesn't like that, Rick. He finds peace at being up top, and there's a lot of grip up there, and that's what makes racing at the Rock so much fun. And I'm sure Kyle Larson is enjoying it right now. Kyle Larson out in front of the field, running on running in the second spot. Back at the Rock, once again, the second annual running at the Rock. Kyle Larson continuing to run up front here at the Rock. Brennan Gaughan running second, James Busher, Chase Elliott, and Johnny Sauter, your top five of the North Carolina Education Lottery 200. Larson's lapped up to the top 25, Rick. Those trucks battling side by side just in front of Larson. That's Tim George Jr. They're second. Brennan Gaughan just behind that 93 of Chris Jones who's going a lap down. Brennan lost a little bit of that time to Larson that lap, but he's been in some pretty heavy traffic. He had been maintaining uh, fairly closely the lap times that Kyle Larson's been running. Now it's about a four second gap between the top two. There's Stop. Chase Elliott, Johnny Sauter. It's all a little bit of wiggle out of Johnny's truck there, which is pretty normal for this racetrack. Not only is it abrasive, it's rough too. So you get those trucks bouncing and porpoising in those bumps, and then with no grip, the things will jump sideways at any moment. You guys talked about drivers would be screaming for tires. Was that on lap 10? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and now uh, their voice has gone up several octaves since lap 10. You know, we talked, you. you talked about Sauter wiggling. He started outside the top 10, in the 11th spot, and has had to race his way through into the top five. So. Uh, maybe using those tires a little bit more than than Chase or, or Jeb, the two trucks that he sandwiched between those guys starting up front. Hermie Sadler. Yeah, Rick, the three of Tad Dillon is starting to make his way towards the front. After a qualifying effort of 14th, he started off on the free side. With the last 8, 10, 12 laps, he's reported the balance on his truck is much, much better. And as you can see, he is using the top side of the racetrack really helping his exit off the corner, making up a lot of time. Also, another truck from Iona Pit Road. A good run so far today. The 32, Miguel Paluto, qualified 18th, just broke into the top 10, also using a lot of the racetrack, but saving tires in the process. He wasn't really saving them off two there. That truck was a little bit sideways and wiggling. Saving the truck off of two. <laughs> yeah, that's, he was more concerned about the truck than the tires at that point. But great early run. You know, his teammates all started up in the top five. Miguel back in the 18th spot. And to be able to drive into the top ten, you know, as a race car driver, you want to be able to do whatever your buddies can do. And he's proven that he's getting it done now. Not a good qualifying run at all. But now he's going to race Matt Crafton for that ninth spot. So good early run for Miguel. Good start to the season. Top 10 at Daytona this year. Went to uh, Martinsville. Had a top 20 finish. That has him up in the top 10 in, in points. And again, Miguel Pluto running in the top 10 now. Out in front, Kyle Larson has almost a six and a half second lead over Brendan Gaughan. Running second, James Busher, Chase Elliott, Johnny Sauter still your top five, and Jeff Burton, your pole sitter. Running in the sixth spot, Ty Dillon, Joey Logano. Matt Crafton and Miguel Paluto, your top 10. Johnny Sauter, we mentioned in the top five now, Hermie. Yeah, but keep an eye on the 98 truck, Rick. He is reporting he thinks he has a slow leak, probably in the right rear, and right rear potentially going flat for the 98. We'll keep an eye on it. Well, he drove up, uh, Hermie, and, and caught Chase Elliott in a, in a hurry. And when he got there, sort of tried to pass him for a few laps, but since then has fallen back. So. I agree, something has definitely faded on that truck. Whether he just wore his tires out racing up to the top five, or if he has a tire going flat, I don't know, but certainly the performance of that vehicle has gone off. We've completed 49 laps, so that's that's about the extent of what these tires are, have any grip whatsoever to them. As you see Ryan Blaney drive by the 88 at Matt Crafton, that was for the 10th position. Ryan's on the move now. Remember, he's one of the, one of the drivers that was able to test her, and he said he, he learned so much during that test. One of the things they talked about in the first practice was tires cording after about 40 laps. A lot of rubber on the racetrack now. We'll see how they hold up.
Hey, race fans, the 2013 NASCAR season is heating up, and you won't want to miss any of the live action. Speed has teamed up with Charlotte Motor Speedway to offer you exclusive ticket packages to the all-star race. Visit speed.com slash deals to check out all the amazing offers. Still in front of the field is Kyle Larson. He has put nine seconds between himself and second place Brendan Gaughan. Now, we talked earlier about youth versus experience. Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, two of the young guns in this series. Well, they've sandwiched Brendan Gaughan in the top three right now. And Chase Elliott was able to get by James Busher for that third spot, so Sauter back into the fourth position. How's the 31 team holding up out there, Ray? Well, Busher has said early on in the run that he was a little bit loose coming off of two, but a little bit more so loose coming off of turn number four. But the last two or three laps, he's been on the radio saying, my rear tires are completely gone. I got to have tires. We've been hearing crew chiefs down on this end of pit road saying we still have 10 or 15 more laps before we're ready for you to hit pit road. Yeah, I know the crew chief would love to see them go about 70 laps, but it's, it, it's hard to explain how little grip there is out there as we watch Johnny Sauter take over that third spot from Chase Elliott. Michael, it's, it's, it's amazing how little grip you can have out there. Yeah, and you know, Johnny Sauter went through that transition, I think, when his tires really went off. He thought one of them was flat. It was so bad. But uh, now he's figured out how to manage that tire, uh, the traction to the back tires, and, and is uh, making some moves. He drives past Chase Elliott. Johnny Sauter up to the third spot. So youth is leading the race and experience is running second and third. So like we said at the top of the show, I'm not sure which one's more valuable today, what you know or what you don't know. And Phil, you said it's hard to explain that feeling. They were going 100 and almost 50 miles an hour average around this racetrack with fresh tires. How unnerving okay. is that to not feel like you have anything grabbing back there in the rear to be able to go around this racetrack still go upwards of 130 way. plus miles an hour? Oh, yeah, we're, we're now three seconds slower than what the ball was, and they're doing all they can do to run those kind of speeds. But, you know, you just get in the center of the corner, and you see Jeff Burton now try to get, got by James Bush, and now James right looks back, back the to the inside. Yeah, you're clear. But you go through those bumps through there going in three and four there, and that thing's wanting to porpoise, and it's wanting to, the back end to jump out because we've got 675 horsepower that they're trying to get hooked up to this racetrack. I, I would imagine they're not able to get wide open until they get absolutely on the straightaway. Yeah, Phil, you know, we see the trucks at Martinsville and nose is all up off the ground because you're just looking for that mechanical grip. Usually if you're running 150 miles an hour on a super speedway, those noses are pinned, but not here at Rockingham. See how high that front end's up off the ground? That's because these teams are struggling and trying to get all the possible mechanical grip that they can get. They're not overly worried about the aerodynamic grip whole lot of short track thinking when you race here at, at, at the rock you got to squeeze that gas down you got to be easy on the brakes and that's what these guys are dealing with now how about the run by ty dillon starts 14th we talked about him running high maybe conserving those tires early in the run now he is making the run on the field ty dillon has just taken fifth away from jeff burton and look at that momentum when you really work it right on the outside you get such a run off the corner the guy in the inside is trying to get the throttle out not able to do it slide up the racetrack you get a straight run off the corner and drive by him like ty did very impressive for young ty dillon and the caution has come out this is an ideal situation for the crew uh, chiefs and drivers. 30, 36 drivers, 36 crew chiefs that are breathing a sigh of relief right now that the caution flag is out. Get caught up there tonight. Talking about debris on the racetrack, bringing out this caution, the second caution of the day. Maybe Trent Owens isn't breathing a sigh of relief. A sigh of relief as big a as big a lead as Kyle Larson had. He would have loved to have seen green flag pit stops. Kyle Larson had nearly a 12-second lead over second place, had already put the 18th driver of Timothy Peters a lap down. More than likely, Timothy will be our free pass recipient. And Timothy made that pit stop early to adjust a really loose truck. And uh, if he gets that free pass back on the lead lap, that'll be a good break for that team. But you're right, Phil. This, this guy, he's putting down, picking them up and putting them down. I can't wait to see if he's if it's going to be youth that wins out in the end or if the experience is going to come come and uh, hunt him it's down open. as they race toward the checker. It's Remember the same truck, same team, dominated with Nelson Piquet Jr. Made a mistake it's after road, cost him the chance of winning. Pit road is open. Kyle Larson leads the field on to pit road. Let's go first to Hermie Sadler. Johnny Sauter is going to bring his 98 truck to pit road. Thought he had a flat tire. Realized he was just a little bit free. They're going to take four tires to no-go fuel. He wants one round of wedge in the 98, right? Now Larson will come around. He has told his crew chief that he's a little bit tight when he's up high on the racetrack. 
but when he's in the middle, it's pretty good. So let's not do any adjustments or not much at all. Autism Speaks on the hood of this number 30. He pits and pit stall number five. He'll get fuel in there. The question mark is, will these other trucks be around him by the time they get done with his pit stop? He will go to the left side here. They get tires on right there. And here comes 54 above a Wallace. He will get pulled into his pit. Larson will be the first off the pit road easily. The number four in pit stall number one will try to get freed up just a little bit. We see the 62 of Brendan Gaughan second off of pit road. Yeah, good stop for the 62 bunch. And again, this will bunch everyone back together. Kyle Larson will be able to decide if he wants the inside or outside on the restart. Two times the caution has come out here at Rockingham to slow the pace, but free blistering pace early. Welcome back, Richmond County, Rockingham Speedway. Kyle Larson out in front after 66 of the 200 laps complete. Brendan Gaughan running second. Larson has chose the inside line for this restart. We'll see how it works out for him as they come out of turn four. Green flag back in the air. We're back underway. Green, green, green. Remember, the bottom of the racetrack is good for a few laps on these tires. How about three wide there? Is it Johnny Sauter making it three wide? He's trying, trying to make it three wide. Three wide. Chase Elliott just in front of him in the 94. Great pit stop by Ty Dillon and that team. We talked about his progress. He's trying to race into the third spot on the high side. Remember, Ty won an ARCA race here a few years ago, so he has experience on this racetrack as well. Ooh, Jeff's getting a little bit loose over there. On the inside, it looks like uh, Ryan Blaney in the 29. Jeff got a little bit loose through three and four. Ty Dillon stays with that high line. Got James Busher down below him. Hugging the yellow line at the bottom of the racetrack. Look at that puppy of trucks right there. Outside, Ryan Blaney inside the four of Jeb Burton. Blaney's been able to clear him. Now we see Hornaday going high, trying to get by the four. Here comes Crafton to the bottom of the racetrack, also trying to get by Jeb Burton. Looked like Crafton thought, thought about going to the inside there, didn't he? Is that a cubby or a gaggle, Phil? It's, a, it's both. both. It All was, together. It was both. But it's fun to watch. You're talking three oh, or four wide. A little bumper there, there. To Jeff Burton. Oh, Ron Hornaday on the outside. He was just inside the top 15 when we restarted. Now he's battling with Crafton up there for a top 10 spot. Just in front of the mess we just looked at. Johnny Sauter gets right up on the back bumper of the 31 of Busher. They were three wide for a moment. Dylan on the outside has the position. Here comes the 98 of Johnny Sauter. Nice move by Johnny Sauter getting that get by Busher. Now Busher's going to fight back in the inside. Johnny likes that bottom. That's where he's decided his truck is going to it's going to have to work for him to win this race. He's been down there all day long and you can see let's off early. The other trucks carry their momentum down into the corner and he just tries to get his aim sooner and get on the gas. But I think Ty is tough on that outside. Fight for fourth continues. Johnny Sauter moves up the track, keeps Ty Dillon up there. Now Sauter nudges just in front of the three of Ty Dillon. Can he clear him as they come out of the corner? Yes, he does. He does. Oh, Ty gave him a little shot in the bumper there and said, you cut me off, brother. He didn't quite have enough room there, but Johnny made a pass work. You know, when you cut somebody off, you're uh, putting yourself in a vulnerable position. If they don't take too kindly to it, they can wipe you out, especially here at Rockingham, you know, where you don't have a whole lot of grip. And you're, we talked about the short track mentality with the way these guys have to race these trucks. So um, you better make sure you got enough room. Might make somebody mad. You, you, pinch, you pinch them off coming off turn two. No, more than likely, you spin down to the inside, into that inside wall and do a lot of damage. Johnny Sauter continuing to run the low line here at Rockingham. Hurry. Hey guys, just want to pass along a note on the Johnny Sauter truck. They put scuffs on on that first pit stop from practice yesterday. They thought it would be more like what it would be like running, starting the race on scuffs after qualifying. So they put their scuffs on from yesterday. So they have two sets of stickers left in the pits. I'm assuming some other teams did that as well, but uh, they're saving both of their set of stickers for the next two stops. Well, there's something about this track, this area. If you roll your truck around in the garage area on a set of stickers, oh, it takes right lap time out of them. So <laughs> scuffed them already. Really That's right. So in order to be able to uh, have the best tires, I want them to be stickers. And I want those stickers at the end. So I like that call by the team. And that's why a lot of the drivers elected not to make a mock qualifying run during practice. They wanted to save that set of tires. The guys that did make the mock qualifying runs that I talked to in the garage area, just as they were recording, they put those tires on on that pit stop. Now they'll have nothing but new tires left for the next two times. Hornaday's made some good adjustments to that nine truck. He's been able to run 
up to James Busher there and catch him. He's running in the seventh spot, racing for six. You got Matt Crafton down on the bottom. So good battle here. Crafton once again making his 297 consecutive start in the Camping World Truck Series, a new record, surpassing that of Terry Cook as the Iron Man of the series. You see that two distinct different lines there. Hornaday went in hard, slid up. Crafton let off early and just hugged that yellow line around the bottom. Paid off in one and two, or three and four for Crafton. Can he make it happen in one and two? And to put that in perspective, that's over 12 full years right. consecutively for Matt Crafton. Not missing a race here in the Camping World Truck Series. Hornaday on the outside, trying to take that position away as Crafton on the inside. Those two racing for the seventh spot. Coming up on a lap truck here, see what they do with it. Ron's got a lot going on in there. What's he doing? Is he driving one-handed? Got his hand on the shifter, it looks like. What the heck? That's the roll bar that runs beside the driver. I remember one day at Dover, Dale Earnhardt lapped me with one arm on the right right, right hand roll bar. And if I could have had three hands on my wheel, I would have, I still couldn't have caught up, kept up with him. And so uh, that's interesting there. Hornaday hanging on. I want, you know, I wonder if it's a situation where he's holding it in gear. Maybe that's, you mentioned he thought right. it was a shifter. It looked like he had a hold to the shifter, not a roll bar. His arm was kind of bent there. Now he's got both hands back on the wheel. Take care of your stuff. That 88 drops like a fly after 40 laps. When you talk about being out for a Sunday tight, drive, but you wouldn't have a... I got the gas in the center. I'm good off. I'm just too tight right now in the center. Take care of your stuff. You can run right here for a little while. Wonder if his spotter said, try driving with two hands once. This, <laughs> that's the brake adjuster knob right there, that orange with a little line out. So he's, he's obviously not adjusting the brakes, which will affect the handling a little bit. Johnny Sauter, round Chase Elliott to the third spot as they come off turn four. He's bringing Ty Dillon along with him. Brendan Gaughan is just about a second behind Kyle Larson. Larson's still out in front. Brendan Gaughan, Johnny Sauter, Ty Dillon, Chase Elliott. Those trucks all in the top five. Crafton just outside the top five with Busher, Hornaday, Jeff Burton, and Joey Logano. Haven't heard a lot from Joey Logano yet, but we still haven't reached the halfway point of this one. Kyle Larson leading from Rocky Dan. The race, you get to test a real car. And if you're sitting at home and you watch it on TV and say, I could do that, well, let's find out. Go to peak and <laughs> enter. Right. Potentially, you could be a development driver for MWR. Is that a possibility? That's exactly what we're after. We're looking for the next stock car star. Could it be the next Kyle Larson, who's out in front of the field at Rockingham? He has a 1.7 second lead over Brendan Gaughan. And continuing to add to that lead, Gaughan still running the high line here at the racetrack. Sauter runs third, Ty Dillon fourth, and Chase Elliott, your top five. Johnny Sauter. Johnny's had a solid race again, going for three in a row. Three in a row has never been done. Johnny's been pretty good about saving his equipment. You see him moving in on Brendan Gaughan right now. He's only about a half a second behind Brendan, who's running in the second spot. And there's Ty Dillon right now running fourth in the other RCR truck. Ty Dillon three seconds behind race leader Kyle Larson, a second behind Brendan Gaughan. So those three trucks separated by a second. Then a little bit bigger gap back to the fifth place truck of Chase Elliott. He's six seconds back or three seconds behind Ty Dillon. There's Chase right there. He's still running the bottom of the racetrack in that Aaron's Dream Machine. Out of Hendrick Motorsports stable. That truck also, we mentioned it last week at Martinsville, is also prepared by Turner Scott Motorsports. They're having a pretty good day. They are. The field all coming on to pit road on lap 64 when we had a caution for debris on the racetrack. Looking back further in the top 10. Oh, here Sauter comes six. Johnny Sauter driving around Brendan Gaughan. He's up to second spot. You and know, Johnny. I'm kind of, I have mixed feelings, Phil. I think, I really think you can save your tires a little bit better if you run the bottom of the racetrack. You let off earlier, you get an aim, you squeeze the gas down a little bit sooner. But, but if you go up, up top, you've got to have more power on it. You know, you're going a further distance, so you're running the truck harder. I think you save your tires better by running the bottom. And you're on a throttle longer because of that longer distance. That's I, right. I agree with you. Are they trying to save down there? Is that what we're hearing with the 62 team? Well, here's the situation, guys. When Brendan practiced, he would take his South Point race truck down to the bottom of the track, and he said it just got way too tight. 
and he was afraid that was going to be hard on the right front tire so he likes the high side and he was reminiscing a little bit about back in the 90s when you ran here at Rockingham how there would be a six second drop off on the tires he said I used to love to watch Harry Gant run at this particular racetrack because he was high wide and handsome I said to Brendan well at least you got the high and the wide part figured out Wow shots being fired early there's a battle for the 11th spot. The 32 is Miguel Paluto, the 29, and Ryan Blaney. We saw Paluto make his way up into the top 10 after the pit stop and dropped out of that top 10. Now oh, we've got a smoker. Working back up. Caution comes out because of maybe, smoker in turn three. Is that Norm Benning had a problem with his engine? Or, or maybe. See the 57 of Norm Benning slow on the apron. It's gotten into the wall, hadn't he, Phil? Yeah, Probably sure the right has. front tire there. Yeah, see also, some damage to the left rear corner. Looked like Jeff Agnew in the 27 was also a little bit slow. He's making his way onto pit road now also. So that brings out the third caution from Rockingham. Now, we haven't had a big gap there between that last caution and now 30 laps. Uh, Do you come back onto pit road? I think we as far tires as tires. Coming. Let's see if we can see what happens north. Oh, he got hit from behind like into the it, outside wall. Was that Chase Elliott, possibly? I think it Chase was Chase Elliott. Elliott, possibly, that maybe just nudged Norm, Norm a little bit, got him into the outside wall. Chase probably thought Norm was going to go low, and Norm stayed high, and they made a little bit of contact. No damage to the Aaron's Dream Machine there of Chase Elliott, but you can see on the right front maybe a bit of a, a scrape, but yeah. that won't hurt him any. Uh, but it sure did uh, mess up Norm's day. I think we're in the window now. I think this is where the guys normally would have said, okay, let's, let's have cautions at 50, 100, and 150. I think now you have to think about putting tires on again. Again, 30 laps on, on these tires is a long time. Yeah, I think we get our tires now, Phil, and then if we have another lap, another caution in 30 laps, then we got some real decisions, no, no decisions to, decision to make. Yeah. And we heard some of the teams had two sets of stickers still on pit road, so they would want to come onto the racetrack or onto pit road now and get those sticker tires. Eric Jones will get your free pass and back on the lead lap racing from the rear of the field. Now he's going to be back on the lead lap. He's got a good truck, so it's a good break for that kid. Be fun to see if he can get up in the top 10. Casey Kane put it on lap number 124 and then on lap 176, but that's how the cautions fell. And that's why he was able to do that last year. Well, you stay out here and all the leaders pitch. You'll get lapped in 20 laps. Again, working the front end of pit road as we see everyone make the hard left turn. They're coming on to pit road. We'll head down to Hermie Sadler. Well, obviously, Johnny Salter very happy with his truck, although he wants one round of wedge again in the left rear. Still a little bit on free on entry and exit. Four tires, fuel, and wedge. The three of Austin Dillon not calling for any adjustments. It'll be four tires and fuel only for the three truck. Ray? Well, Trent Owens was hoping to keep that number 30 truck out on the racetrack, but just as Michael said, he knew they had no option. If they stayed out, they'd be in too big a trouble. Here comes the 30. They stop. They're going to the right sides here. They'll hang four fresh sticker tires. They have another set of stickers here in the pit for later in the race. They'll go four tires here. They'll put Sunoco fuel in also. Right behind him, Timothy Peters is in. We see the three is coming around. It's going to be a tight battle. Looks like the 30 will just barely get ahead of Ty Dillon. Good battle off of pit road. Brendan Gunn goes on third. Yeah, I think a number that was <laughs> very difficult for one driver that we saw there was the 21 second pit stop by the 98 of Johnny Sauter. He can't be happy about that. Yeah, good, good work by Joey Logani. Huge crowd here at Rockingham. Welcome back to the North Carolina. Now, it's very difficult on pit road, obviously, to do so many things at once. Last time they were on pit road, let's listen in to what happened with young Jeb Burton's team. What did I do wrong right there, Mike? Put it first, and you got to leave your foot on the brake. You were just in on the clutch, okay? It really started rolling forward on them when they started hitting the left side lug nut. So you got to be on the clutch and on the brake. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, that's a situation, Phil, where you got a heel toe. You want to have your foot on the clutch and your and your foot on the brake at the same time. And so uh, Jeb just let the truck slightly roll ahead. It didn't really kill the pit stop. He got it stopped by the time the boys got over there to change the tires. But that's all the learning process. We talked about the top four qualifiers, the pole sitter and, and his three buddies all being the average age of them is 20. They haven't made many pit stops. You don't make many pit stops when you're racing a Bandolero or a late model at the local <laughs> short tracks. So this is all new to them. That was our ace most helpful there as we listened into the crew of the Ford truck and again a lot of things happening on pit road obviously you've got six guys over the wall you've got a driver that's got to do multiple things you see the damage to the right front corner of the 94 remember this is from matt craft and zomboard you see that's norm bending up there against the outside wall you see the he chase was going to go to the inside the norm was going to try to go to the inside to get around him chase just made a little bit of contact but that cost him to spend some extra time on pit road and you see the damage repair there on the right front corner and that has chase right now restarting in the 18th spot it might have just gouged a hole in that nose bill so they knew they needed to get the air around the truck instead of through it we're just reaching the halfway point in the race so there's plenty of time for uh, young chase to rebound but uh that was a setback for the team Ray Joey Logano, we haven't talked about him a lot. He was just outside the top 10, but now up almost into the top five. And his reach towing forward has been very, very loose. He hasn't made much progress, but check out these numbers, guys. He came in in eighth on that round of pit stops at lap 94, went out fourth. So the pit crew getting him some track position. What's happening on your end, Hermie? Well, the 98 of Johnny Salter. Johnny obviously very unhappy with losing all these spots on pit road. The conversation between he and Joe Shear has talked about the wheel well openings on these trucks, not big enough, trying to get a lot of side force on these trucks, but having a difficulty with the pit crew getting the tires off and on. Apparently it's bidding them a couple times this year, but Johnny Salter very, very irritated at this point going to green. So again, they're gonna add a lap. We'll be back for the restart right after this. Two by two, the field once again making the way through three and four for the North Carolina Education Lottery 200. Past the halfway point, 98 laps of racing remain when they come to the stripe. It's Kyle Larson taking the inside line once again. Now it's Ty Dillon who will be on his outside for this restart. That's a pretty helpful pit crew for that young man, too. Another great pit stop. Got him starting on the front row right beside Kyle Larson. See if he can run with Kyle. No one else has been able to all day. How about Matt Crafton diving to the inside of Brendan Gaughton to make it three wide? Brendan had to move up the racetrack to give him some room. And Crafton now setting his sights on second as he tries to work to the inside of Ty Dillon. Crafton's aggressive move kind of cost Joey Logano in that 19 truck. It bounced him up the hill, lost a couple of spots. Hornaday now on the inside of Logano going for the fifth spot. Battle for second continues. Right behind them, Brendan gone in the 62, but it's Crafton on the bottom. Ty Dillon on the high side, and Crafton will take second away from Dillon. Joey Logano now, the 19, jumps now. back to the inside of the 9 on Hornaday, trying to get that spot back. Hornaday coming down to the middle of the racetrack on the entry into turn three. We mentioned earlier, Coleman Presley did a great job of setting that truck up for Joey Logano. Joey jumped in that truck right off the airplane from Texas and qualified up in the top ten. A lot of momentum for Jeb Burton running in the eighth spot, trying to take away seventh from Hornaday. Clear behind him. Mm. Slipping and sliding, racing hard. There's Johnny Sauter aggravated over a pit stop trying to race alongside Miguel Pluto. And what happens to Johnny Sauter is he feels like he'll probably have to run that thing a little bit harder than he wants to early on to get by all those trucks. He wants to be able to conserve those tires. He knows he only has one more in the pits. He had set himself up to make a real strong run at our leader Kyle Larson, got into the second spot, one of the best trucks here. Now he's back in 10th and all this traffic. I understand his frustration. That's a tough tough give up and you know what Phil they got one more pit stop and that finger isn't going to get any bigger so that could hurt them on their final pit stop as well out in front Kyle Larson Matt Crampton closing the gap this is the closest we've seen anyone run with Kyle Larson today Crampton going for the lead Matt was the fastest truck that time on the racetrack by a couple of attempts a second over Kyle Larson he took a run at him through one and two had to back back off down the back straightaway Fastest lap by Kyle Larson over 142 miles per hour. And we see Crafton now the gap about three truck links between the two. See the RCR trucks right now trailing in third and fourth. Ty Dillon in third, Brennan God in fourth. 
Kirby Sadler, that Thor Sport 88, looking pretty strong. You He's got made a pretty good rebound, out, Rick. We talked earlier. Very, very loose on the 88, so they've turned their race around, and I asked them, what all kind of changes did you make on this 88? They said, wedge, old school wedge. Just lit up the 88. He's back right now, running down the 30. That's a good battle for our lead. You can see Matt just likes it a little bit lower than Kyle Larson does and can pull alongside of him off two, but can't quite close the deal. Yeah, Matt's truck is so good through one and two, not quite as good through three and four. Kyle Larson has the advantage. It looks like through three and four, but Matt is on it through one and two. It looks like he's sliding sideways through the entire so it probably feels yeah. like that too. Ahead, and when you're leading away. a race here at Rockingham, it doesn't matter where you're running at Rockingham. It isn't comfortable, but the speeds these cats are going in pickup trucks certainly isn't easy. Gap being closed once again. Crafton so good through one and two. Closes it down to a one you're truck gap. Yeah, keep that pressure on him. He'll mess up. Nothing out back. Well, I'm not too sure about that. I don't see Paul Larson <laughs> doing a whole bunch of messing up. Look at that good run. Matt got down on the bottom. There's just a little extra grip on that yellow line. You get your left front tires down on the yellow line and able to hold it there without losing the front end, you can really get good drive up off the corner. Three wide on the front straightaway. Johnny Sauter cutting his way through the field. And look at Matt Crafton using that yellow line and keeping that truck pinned to the bottom to try to get around Kyle Larson. Johnny Sauter, as you mentioned, probably running with a little bit more Anxiety as he lost eight spots on pit road has moved up to the seventh spot already. And again, he has to do that while trying to save his stuff. He knows that he has to have tires left, rear tires left. You know, for this could potentially be a 60 or 70 lap run. It's 75 to 85 laps is the window for fuel. Tires seem to fall off to the point where the drivers are screaming they need new tires after about 45 laps. Or sooner. Or sooner. <laughs> yeah, oh, believe or, me. Yeah. Or 10. If there was unlimited tires down on pit road, they would pit after 10 laps, Rick. That's just how important tires are and how much difference they make. You can see maybe Crafton's decided to back the pressure off of Larson a little bit. Lost a lot of ground to him in the last couple of laps. A couple of guys here have been running the top side of the racetrack pretty much all day long. That's where they've decided to, 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 to set their trucks up forward. It looks like it's working well. Dylan in the third spot and right behind him. Another strong run for Brendan Gaughan right up there with uh, with Dylan. Again, two trucks running that high line here at Rockingham. Kyle Larson, Matt Crafton, now separated by about four tenths of a second out in front of this field. Kyle very, Larson, very nice, 47, has been the dominant truck. He's led 96 laps already of the 113 compete completes. Larson, Crafton, Dillon, gone. And Logano, your top five from The Rock. Kyle Larson still out in front of the field here at Rockingham. Half a second separating him and Matt Crafton as we've just passed the halfway points. Take our AT&T AT &T race break. Get you caught up on how we've gotten to this point. Again, Jeff Burton led the field to the green flag to start this one off. After a track record, James Busher was able to jump out front and lead early, and then it was Kyle Larson that decided to take that position right back away from his teammate. And has been dominating this race ever since. A lot of slipping and sliding at the rock. Post quarters racing two and three wide. A couple of teammates fixing it up there. Joey Logano slow and steady, making his way to the front. His pit crew picked him up some spots on the last stop. So good run for that team. Kraft has been strong, but it was the problem of the 57. Getting a little nudge from Chase Elliott, and that put Norm Benning into the wall. They're screaming for tires already, but that's normal here at Rockingham. Larson out in front by a second. Saturday, the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series runs wide open in the heartland. And when the green flag drops, it's every driver for themselves. The NASCAR Camping World Truck Series live from Kansas. That's Saturday at 1.30 Eastern, only on speed. Welcome back to Rockingham. Still in front of the field, Kyle Larson. He has a two-second lead over, well, right now it's Matt Crafton. But here comes Ty Dillon trying to take second away from Crafton. Yeah, Ty Dillon's been using that outside groove along with Brendan Gaughan. They're making it work. We heard a report from Matt Crafton a few moments ago that it felt like he may have a little too much tire inner liner pressure. It felt like he was on top of the racetrack. 
Now he's talking about just being tied off for two. I don't know that I ever felt like I was in the racetrack here at Rockingham. Did you, Michael? <laughs> what about these two? Speaking about getting to each other, they yeah. raced together a lot at Martinsville. That's Jeb Burton, the rookie, and the experienced veteran champion Ron Hornaday that they're racing, they're racing side by side with. They've been all over each other again this week. Jeb, a little incidental contact to the back of Hornaday at Martinsville, sent him into the wall, and uh, Ron's racing him really hard, and that's what we're supposed to do in a truck race. We go 200 miles, and we do them as hard as we can go, and this has been a great battle. Another young rookie joining that battle, Chase Elliott, had some issues with uh, some damage on the right front of that truck, and they made repairs on that last pit stop, and he's battled his way back up toward the top 10 with these guys. We, we started all the way back in 18th, and that has moved his way up into the top 10. Nice recovery by Chase. Those three trucks, 8th, 9th, and 10th on the scoring pylon. Last week, as you mentioned, a little bit of a uh, brush up between the two. Four of Larson got into the back of the nine of Ron Hornaday, and that was a battle for the lead at the time. Hornaday was out in front of the field. Hornaday's teammate, Kevin Harvick, went ahead and voiced his displeasure while they were on the track, and it looked as though Burton was trying to talk to Ron before they left the track. Ron didn't want anything, any part of it, but we heard Jeff earlier in the pre-race show said, I called Ron, we talked about it, the issue's over. You can see Chase Elliott, he makes the move Chase around. On the bottom, just keep logging Jeff. laps up there on the top. Just let her roll as long as you can, get her pointed. Okay, Chase has a good truck here, made his way all the way from 18th, now up to 9th. I love listening to the spotters try to coach these young kids. A lot of the spotters, a lot of experience watching races from top. You can learn a lot as a spotter. You can help a young man a great deal with the information that you give them. And uh, we could hear them saying, just roll the corner and lay off the gas. And, and Chase has done a great job rebounding from uh, the problems he had. And now it looks like he's going to get him make a move on Hornaday for that eighth spot. Jeff Burton running back in 10th. Battle for the eighth spot between Hornaday and Chase Elliott. Kyle Larson almost three and a half seconds in front of Ty Dillon. But Ty Dillon, the man on the move. Penny from Rockingham out in front of this field. It's Kyle Larson. He has been dominant. He's led 123 laps already. And he sets the pace here once again. Ty Dillon about four seconds back in the second position. Let's get through our top ten. We go down to Ray Dunlap. Well, thank you, Rick. I'll start off with Kyle Larson. Remember a year ago right here, that 30 truck was equally as great. Nelson PK Jr. driving that, but late in the race, he got a pit road speeding penalty, which took him out of contention. Now, if this race were to go green, Trent Owens, the crew chief on the number 30, told me they could go all the way to 183. I'm sure the drivers aren't going to want to be on the track that long. Hermie? Well, Ray, it's been a solid, steady day for Ty Dillon. They qualified. 14th and they have slowly but surely on the racetrack but also on pit road gained spots they have encouraged Ty to use the top side of the racetrack he has done that saving his tires they feel good about one more adjustment to try to get this three truck up there to challenge to 30 now the next truck in line Johnny Sauter steady trying to make up ground lost on the pit stop he gave up the second place position in the last Ran of pit stops, went all the way back to 10th. Busher spinning on the back stretch. Busher slides, makes a little bit of contact. It looked like with the inside barrier. No, he didn't. He was far enough away. But okay, James Busher, let's go, let's go, let's your defending go, champion go, go. of the Camping World Truck Series, slides into the apron. He was running in the seventh spot. Good news, he got it refired, got it turned back around. He, he will stay on the lead lap, but he needs to take care of those tires till he gets back to pit road. Yeah, bad right side news, tires are flat. Tires are flat. If you go too fast, Phil, you know they're going to blow out. Look at there, all the way up top of the racetrack when he spun around. I wonder what happened. Could he have made a little contact with the lap truck? I might have you see stayed in the throttle. You see the 84. Mike Carmen gets into the outside wall right behind James. Mike couldn't see anything, all the smoke that James put up. That's awful early in the corner to... Ah, them lap cars. Uh, I think it might have been something to do with... with Harmon, maybe. Right along yeah. the horn today. I think maybe, did Mike Harmon ha blow a tire? Looked like he, he turned dead right. James had already gotten by him and to lap him, and looked like Mike Harmon turned dead right. Looks like he, he's able to make it to pit road without doing any more damage from those flat yeah, tires. Down. Do but he lost the race, race so night. he'll have to race for the year for the lucky dog. Out, sure so James Busher on pit road. Everything's fine on the yeah, back. The caution you don't need come on out. the back. Nothing's on the back. On Nothing's the lead on the lap. Right side. There's no body damage my side. 18 trucks on the lead lap. James Busher being scored the first truck a lap down. 
I think he brought out the caution. Well, John West Townley was the truck that was in position to get the free pass. James Busher got lapped because of the spin. Right. Well, that Reem Silverado is on pit road. Busher saying that he wasn't necessarily really loose or tight, just that he needed more grip all the way around. Now, he will get four tires on here, but the ultimate question is, guys, did he come down pit road as pit road was closed, which I assume is yes, which means he will have to start at the tail end of the longest line. Well, this is going to be the money stop right here. We've seen like, some guys that, uh, that have performed extremely well. Ty Dillon. Joey Logano's crew, Johnny Sauter, we've seen him lose a couple spots here. This is, we're going to have about 50 laps to go after this pit stop. Now's the time to get it done. Ty Dillon has been very strong. Johnny Sauter on the racetrack has been probably one of the strongest trucks. But can he have a good pit stop to stay up here in the top five? Hermie. Well, Ray, Johnny Sauter drove from 10th up to 3rd on the racetrack. They're going to take four tires, fuel, let one pan of air out of the right front tire to try to free that truck up through the center. Ty Dillon is tight on in the center, loose on entry. He's going to take four tires, Sudoku fuel, also give Ty an air pressure adjustment. Ray? Can't imagine that anybody would go with four tires. It'll be four tires stop for sure with Kyle Larson in his autism speaks. Chevy Silverado. He is sitting here. The guys come around to the left side. Jeff Burton just went by him. They're going to hang four tires and they'll throw fuel into this thing. They get the four tires on. The number 30 will. Oh, he'll be the first one off pit road. Here comes Crafton down, and we also see a good stop again for Joey Logano and also Brendan Gaughan. Those will be the first four off of pit road. Looks like Ty Dillon is going to be the big loser. He lost six positions as well as you see Johnny Sauter losing four once again. Slow stops for Johnny Sauter as well as Ty Dillon. Take another look. This is Dillon's stop. I was watching his stop. His right side part of the stop was about a second faster than Johnny Sauter's. You see Probs looks like on the left rear there. Finally got it off and then back out. But you see Matt Crafton drive out. So can he overcome issues on pit road? Ty Dillon, Johnny Sauter, both two of the fastest trucks here. But now in the back. Back-to-back -back races at Rockingham, North Carolina Education Lottery 200. The trucks making their second start here. And we will see who makes it to victory lane in year number two. Casey Kane was the big winner a year ago. Just over 50 laps to go. Kyle Larson on the inside, Crafton on the outside. Green flag back in the air. See, Johnny Sutter jumps to the inside to make it three wide. On Hornaday, not able to make the pass. We saw Matt Crafton hang right with Kyle Larson for a number of laps after the last restart. He Talked was looking about... for an adjustment on that truck. He thought he had too much air in his tires that, meant, that enabled him to, the truck fell off too much at the end of the run. So maybe they made that adjustment. He can stay up with Larson. No one's been able to do for very long all day today. Some good news for Johnny Sauter. Every time he's come to pit road, he's lost spots. He doesn't have to come back to pit road anymore. <laughs> and I think he lost the fewest amount of spots this time he was on pit road. He lost four spots on pit road most recently. See, Johnny's already back up to the top five. You see the nine of Hornaday right in front of Johnny Sauter, the green number nine. Crafton and the 62 of Brendan Gaughan running that higher line, running second and third. Kyle Larson has set the pace here for over 130 laps. Larson's truck just doesn't fall off, guys. You know, the, the top five is able to hang with him pretty well for 10 or 12 laps, but he just keeps on steadily pulling away after that. So these teams are smart. They've been to pit road. They've made their adjustments. Now we'll see if those adjustments are going to pay off. Johnny Sauter able to get by Ron Hornaday fairly easily. Now back up to the fourth spot. Let's see if he can chase down those th front three trucks. Look at Brendan down to the bottom of Matt Crafton entering turn one. Can he make the move? Gets a good run off through the center of the corner, diving that corner a little bit. Had a lot of momentum at the exit of two. He's able to get in front of the 88 as they go into turn number three. Now the two Thor Sport trucks running nose to tail. Crafting up high, down low is Johnny Sauter. You know, sometimes that's, ooh, look at how, look at the right-hand side of the That's screen. a gaggle, right? That's definitely a gaggle. <laughs> and right in the middle of that gaggle, is that Joey Logano? I think something's wrong with Joey Logano. Too. He's losing positions left and right. Logano struggling. Mainly just left, left, but yeah. yeah. Battle for second continues between teammates. I think Johnny Sauter right now knows he has about 48 laps left to chase down that 30 truck of Kyle Larson. He said, let me give, give me a break, teammate. I can get this kid. Going for the third spot is Johnny Sauter. Matt Crafton's not wanting to give it up. But I think Sauter 
is faster than Crafton right now, so if he can get around him, maybe he can do something with Larson. It'd be interesting to see Johnny Sauter racing to the checker with Larson. That's been the two best trucks all day long. Johnny's troubles on pit road has kept him from contending with Larson, but he clears his teammate looking for gone. We heard Matt have to pedal the throttle through the center of the corner. That was just enough to give the momentum to the 98 of Johnny Sauter, but Brendan gone. That South Point Chevrolet hanging in there pretty well, too. Staying strong. Brendan Gaughan running in the second spot, just behind Kyle Larson. Remember, this looks a lot like the last restart. We saw Kraft, a couple other trucks, be able to track Kraft, uh, Larson, but and even Crafton got it beside Kyle Larson, but they fall off later in the run. I, lo I love what's shaping up here. Brendan Gaughan's truck's good on the high side. Kyle Larson sort of in the middle of the racetrack. Johnny Sauter the bottom. So we got three trucks running three different lines. Battle for second Johnny. now. Here comes Johnny to the inside of Brendan Gaughan. Down Thunder Alley they go. The back stretch here at Rockingham. Now Brendan Gaughan up high with the momentum, holding on to that second spot. Coming out on the front stretch, Sauter once again. Door to door as they cross the stripe for second. Gone just inches in front of Sauter. Watch how differently you have to run the bottom of the racetrack than the top of the racetrack as they get down to turn number three. If Johnny's not able to clear Brendan, watch how much harder Brendan can get in the corner. Johnny just backs off, eases down in the corner, but gets back to that throttle in the center. While these two are racing for second, that gives the 30 the opportunity to get a little cushion between the two of them. Kyle Larson has almost a half a second lead now over Brendan Gaughan. And that gap going away once again now that these two trucks have stopped racing for the second spot. You know, you got to give Kyle Larson a lot of credit. He doesn't panic. He isn't putting that truck sideways. He understands that these, these guys are a little bit better, run a little bit harder at the beginning of a run, but he also knows it's paying off at the end. So if he drives away from these guys, that could be just tire strategy by that young man. And if that's the case, that's amazing at his age. Well, remember, he doesn't have a great deal of experience at this racetrack. Those three, really, the two guys right behind him, the 98 of Sauter and Brendan Gaughan, have more experience at this racetrack. But Kyle did run the East race here last November, so he does know the racetrack. Yeah, what a championship in the East here at this facility. Now, he's never run a truck at this facility, so he is one of the 13 that is making his first truck series start here at Rockingham. And the tires, we're talking about tire management, the tires on a K&N car are much different than these truck tires, so he might have learned what the track was like and where the bumps were, but he didn't learn a whole lot about managing what he's managing today. We asked him that very thing, and he said these tires are actually a little more forgiving than the bias plug Goodyear tires that the K&N cars run here. But man, is he, is he mastering this place today? Fun to watch. We're watching a kid that uh, a lot of people think is the next superstar of NASCAR. The job he did battling Kyle Busch at Bristol, almost winning that race in his first try there, that was amazing. The way he led the trucks down at Miami, it looked like he had a shot to win that race. Another amazing feat. So he's fun to watch. He's very fast and very talented. And remember, he's only been in a stock car vehicle or truck for a year. This is just his second year in these type of vehicles. He spent most of his career on dirt running open wheel just <laughs> the sprint cars and upwards of 170 races in a year this kid runs and I asked him I said did you race anywhere this week other than Texas and he said no darn it I wish I would have <laughs> well that's a kid with uh, not a lot of experience in NASCAR leading the race and those two following him have a ton of experience in this sport 20 year old Kyle Larson out in front out of Elk Grove California leading a couple veterans Las Vegas native Brendan Gaughan running second, Johnny Sauter running in the third spot. Matt Crafton is fourth, and Bubba Wallace has broken into the top five. They are top five from Rockingham. Six tenths of a second separating Kyle Larson and Brendan Gaughan. The battle for second continues between Brendan Gaughan and Johnny Sauter. Brendan has, has been so tough on Johnny, and it's late in the race. You're running second. These boys race hard. Johnny had him passed off, too, I thought. But Brendan shut the door. Johnny's definitely faster than Brendan. If he can make this move, it'll be interesting to see what he can go do with our leader, Kyle Larson, who's been dominant. Great race with the youth of our series. We got Jeb Burton in the four. Take a look at this just moments ago. Bubba Wallace in the 54, kissing the wall, coming out of turn four. Yeah, just a couple laps ago, Bubba's done a nice job. He got up to the fifth spot. Now he's lost fifth to Jeb Burton. Now he's in a battle for six with Ty Dillon. Looks like Ty has it. And there's Chase Elliott, the 94, right behind him. Talking about the youth of this sport right here all together. 
Jeb Burton running fifth. Ty Dillon is sixth. Bubba Wallace is seventh. Chase Elliott eighth. See, just 31 laps to go here, and you think, well, that's not that long, but when you're on these tires after you've already run 20, 25 laps on them, it can be a long, long time. I just love watching these kids get this stuff figured out. We've got a great class of rookies this year. Obviously, the top five starters average age, top four starters average age of 20. We talk about the inexperience of Kyle Larson. He's running his 11th NASCAR race today. The two guys that are trying to track them down, Brendan Gunn and Johnny Sauter, together have started 714 <laughs> NASCAR races. That's a pretty diverse difference. That tells you how talented this young class is. Ray Dunlap. Well, guys, would you have believed that I could tell you that Joey Logano is a lap down? It just happened on the racetrack. The reason is they believe they have a loose wheel, so Joey running at a reduced pace. They were really hoping for a quick caution to get into the pit area. That has not happened, and it may not be long before he goes another lap down. Logano back in 18th right now will not be a factor, and the yellow is out. Caution does come out. This time it's the 93 of Chris Jones sliding across the racetrack. And I think, I think Johnny Sauter had cleared Brendan Gaughan. It depends on where the timing lines are. He'd gotten ahead of Gaughan off turn two just as the caution flew. If that's the case, Johnny's, Johnny can turn up the heat now. Yeah, and Joey Logano will get that free pass. They can come back in, tighten that wheel up. Now, remember, that was the last set of tires that these guys had in their pits, so they're not going to be able to put tires on, but they can tighten that wheel. You think they have any fresher tires since they got to come in anyway, Phil, that the, the 19 truck could possibly put on? Look at this. Spin here. Nice Extra turn two. Nice job by the 75 of Caleb Holman getting her by on the inside. There goes Caleb. And behind him, you see the 99 of Brian Silas negotiating. Remember, when, when you spin coming off turn two, more than likely you're going to hit that inside wall. Chris didn't hit it very hard. Mm. Sure lays up a smoke screen. Brian Silas wondering which direction to go. Good thing is the spotter from this side of the racetrack is able to see that a lot better than the driver can. Yeah, when you're down there in that truck, you cannot absolutely see through that smoke. So the spotters really come in handy. Well, this becomes a sprint. And now you don't have probably the best tires that you would like. Oh, I'm so happy. This is good. <laughs> this is what we're looking for. We're going cool to line these babies up, give them a fresh start. But not fresh tires, no. and they're going to tell him to go do battle, and it's going to be so interesting to see what Sauter can do with Larson. These, these tires are going to cool off a little bit, so they're going to have a little bit of grip for about 14 seconds, and then it's going to go away. You can see what a couple they? of guys coming to pit road. See not if they elect for some, some tires that might be a little fresher. Yeah, they may have some tires. You see Ron Hornaday is tires, tires on Hermie. <laughs> yeah, guys, the 9 of Ron Hornaday and the 13 of Todd Bonat are on pit road. They're putting scuffs on from earlier in the race today, a little bit cooler, maybe slightly fewer laps, but also these two drivers needed chassis adjustments as well. So already towards the back end of the lead lap car, so they came in. Cooler tires and some chassis adjustments for the 9 and 13. And another thing you have to remember, they can let the air back out of these. The guys have built up a bunch of air pressure in those tires that are on the trucks right now. They come in with the air pressure back down. The final 25 laps from Rockingham coming up. Jake and Bank is all new NASCAR blog from Fox Sports. Get the latest buzz and go beyond the nuts and bolts of the garage area. An entertaining and humorous look at your favorite drivers and the most outrageous stories in NASCAR. Check out foxsports.com slash Jake and Bank. Ray, what's the story with the 31 team? Well, I just came running down here, Rick, to see what was going on because I noticed they were throwing stickers on that Ream Chevrolet. And the deal is when Busher spun out earlier in the race, they threw on the original set number one that had come off. Those were scuffs, and they had these stickers left over. So Busher with brand new tires. He's the only truck out there. He should really be flying when we go back to green. The problem is right yeah. now he's still a lap down. So, I mean, if we can catch another caution, let him get in position <laughs> to get the free pass, get another caution, then he will definitely have a tire advantage but how much time will he have left? That's the spin right there. That's because of uh, Mike Harmon, I think. A little got bit of contact with Mike Harmon. Looked like Mark Harmon got in the left rear corner panel of the 31 truck. You know, I would. it'd be a pretty fun fun deal to have a set of stickers right now. It would be a lap down. Yeah, everybody else. Yeah, I might take my chances with that bet. <laughs> I'll get the, the lucky dog right quick and come back and win this thing. That'd be a great finish.
he may be able to drive around and catch some of the lead lap trucks in 20 laps. 20 laps, we've talked about the tires falling off as much as four seconds, three and four seconds a lap. Trying to make history. Johnny Sauter started off the season winning the first two races, but no one has ever won three. Our series director, Chad Little, won two. Daytona and then here at Rockingham back in 1995. Well, Johnny's in the best position he's been that we're, we're at a restart and he's not put in a hole by a maybe a poor pit stop. Now this is exactly the exact scenario Johnny Sauter needed to be able to win this race. He lost spots every time he went to pit road, but man, he's fast and he's gotten to get, he's finally up beside the leader. 22 laps to go. Can Johnny Sauter make history? Winning the first three races of the 2013 season. Young Kyle Larson still looking for his first win in the Camping World Truck Series. He's got a lot to say about it. Green flag back in the air, we're back underway. Johnny Sauter's really, really good about saving his equipment. We saw him do it last week in Martinsville. Might be saving a little too much on this restart as Brendan Gaughan moves to the inside, trying to take second away. Looks like Johnny spun his tires a little bit, but now he's got it rolling. Oh, oh and around goes the 13 of a dime. That's not right, going to help our damage here. story. Off of two. And Busher is not in position to get the free pass. That's what I was going to say, the story that's developing with James Busher, that's clear. not going to help him because he was not our free pass truck. So looks like Max, Gre uh, out, Max Gresham on. will get that free pass. Saw Todd just come down pit road. You see him, looks like he just lost control of the back end by himself. Nice job by a couple guys getting by that. Again, you spin coming off turn two, you're probably going to hit the inside wall. Take another look. Four wide. Just lost it, got in a throttle in the middle of one and two. Just came to pit road on this most recent caution. Like, Hermie, what's going on with that 13? You can't really speculate, Phil, as to why he spun out as he brings the truck to pit road. A lot of damage to the front. But remember, he was just on pit road, and they put some scuffs on this truck from earlier today that it cooled down and they glued them up again. So anytime you put tires on like that, you never really know how they're going to accept the racetrack after all that heat cycle. But nevertheless, a lot of damage to the front end of the 13. Tough break for Bodine. Trying to work on the front end of that truck. Well, it looks like the right side tires both flat, so they'll have to change the right side tires. Take another look from Looking back from Hornaday. Yeah, he was by himself and just lost control of the back end of that truck. He came in here seventh in points. Going to take a bit of a hit. They've committed to go to Kansas Jack, right next side week with the tire. Seal Master team for Thor Sport. All right, change the tire, guys. Right side. Get some lug nuts to put on that. Thunder Alley. Well, Friday speeds thunders into America's heartland as NASCAR's best drivers prepare for an all-out battle in Kansas. Live NASCAR Fast Friday coverage begins at 1 p.m. Eastern, only on speed. A lot of thunder going on around here. There is a lot of thunder. <laughs> They'll go back two by two. Sauter will get the outside line once again. He was battling with Brendan Gaughan after that restart. We're assuming, I guess, Kyle Larson hey, takes the inside tires, line. Yeah, he's been, Listen. he's done that entire race, so tires. we assume he left will, and he's been up, making it work, side. certainly. Left rear. They continue to work on the 13. And bringing out our most recent caution, Todd Bodine. Yeah, Todd will sit there and he will lose this. Check this out, Phil. We talked about James Busher and his new tires. Look how close he was to getting this lucky dog. You see Clayton Rogers and, and there's Max Gresham. Those two trucks just off the nose of, of Busher as they raced through that accident. If he could have had one more corner, he would have had those guys and been back on the lead lap. Yeah, one more fresh corner with those tires. Those three trucks right there were the battling for the free pass to get back on the lead lap. and. Uh, Unfortunate for Todd Bodan, obviously, to hit the wall, but also for James Busher not to be able to get those guys. Now James is going to get need to get in position and get another caution flag to get caught up. Yeah, Clay Rogers right now is being scored in 19th. He's the first truck a lap down. James Busher 20th. So James will have to get by that 92 who's on his outside now on the restart. Right. As there was no question it was loose lug nuts on that Reese Ford for Joey Logano. They've got those tires changed. We'll see if Logano can march his way to the front. He's on the lead lap. Yeah, Ray, he might want to watch that 31 who's got fresh, fresher tires behind him. 
The pace car makes the hard left turn onto pit road, leaving the field back in the hands of Kyle Larson and Johnny Sauter. Larson on the inside, Sauter on the outside. Green flag back in the air. Good start this time by Johnny Sauter. He's able to stay right beside Larson. It looks like Brendan Gaughan's looking to the bottom. Kyle Larson said, no way. I'm going to make sure you don't have the bottom of the racetrack. But Sauter's dead even. Sauter racing him on the outside. Down the back stretch they go. Sauter with the advantage as they come into three. Larson, Larson got a little bit loose at the exit of two. See what he can do to, from the bottom of the racetrack. A little bumpier down there in three and four on the bottom of the racetrack. Side by side. Here comes Sauter to take the lead as they cross the stripe. Kyle Larson's not going to give up. He's going to stick driving in hard on the bottom of the racetrack. Does he have him cleared? Kyle Larson trying to take it back. Last time by, Sauter led the lap. Right, now it's wow. Larson by two truck links out front. He that drove that truck hard into the corner, but yet made it stick on the bottom. What a move by Kyle Larson to gain the lead back. I think that was Johnny Sauter's shot right there. And Kyle Larson repelled it. Sauter was able to lead a lap, but now it's Kyle Larson back out in front. Jeff Burton trying to make the move on the three of Ty Dillon. Burton in the four, Dillon in the three. And back in the field, Miguel Paluto in the 32. And check out the 19 of Joey Logano. He's making moves. There's James Busher in that truck with the fresher tires. They're making moves. They were three wide down in turn one, and they're going to—they're battling to the finish. 13 of Todd Bodine has gone behind the wall. 15 laps of racing remain. Side by side battle for fifth right there. Ty Dillon. There's the three and the 94 Chase Elliott. Elliott. On the inside, Ty Dillon on the outside. Those two battling for that fifth spot. Jeff Burton looks in, wants a piece of this action. Chase Elliott, it's like he's going to clear the three as they go across the stripe. So Elliott in front of Ty Dillon as they go into one. Here comes Joey Logano. He gets by the four of Jeff Burton. 14 to go. Kyle Larson with almost a second lead already over Johnny Sauter. We talk Sauter. about Johnny Sauter trying to win three in a row. Mark Martin's the only one that's ever done it in this series back in 2006. You know where Mark finished in the third race? Second. Second to number 30. But Again, it was top of nine. And it's never happened in any series, the first three races. That's the way we're trying to set this story up as far as Johnny Sauter having that, that opportunity after winning at Daytona, winning at Martinsville a week ago, and now coming to Rockingham, running second here in this race. I'm telling you, keep your eye on that 19 of Logano. Not he only, is coming now. Not only was he a lap down, Phil, he was falling back and thinking about coming to pit road to get his wheels tightened up, got that caution, put some cooler tires on that truck, and he is driving through them. Closing in on Matt Crafton, trying to take that spot away. Logano is going to go by four, Crafton for four. Clear. Now he sets his sights on the 62 of Brendan Gaughan. He's going to get Brendan Gaughan here. He may have enough time to get catch those guys. He's only about two seconds behind Kyle Larson right now. Depends on how long he gets tied up with Gaughan. Gaughan is so strong on that high side, Phil. If he, if, if he can clear Gaughan, it's going to give him a, really, a real shot clear. at going to get the leaders. Just heard him hear the words clear. There he is. 19 of Joey Logano has moved up into the third spot. Now he'll set his sights on the 98 of Johnny Sauter. We talked about the difference tires make. Those were used. They were just a little cooler. And the air was adjusted on him. He's taking advantage of it. A veteran like Joey Logano, you give him a bit of advantage, he's going to jump on it. Restarted 16th and already up into the third position. Ten laps. Is it enough for Joey Logano to catch Kyle Larson? Hey, in ten laps, he's two seconds behind. All he needs to gain is two-tenths of a second a lap, and that, that truck can do that. Guess what he gained last time by? Two-tenths of a second. So the gap is closing. That time, four-tenths of a second for Logano over Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson still out in front. He's been the dominant truck, led over 173 laps. Joey Logano hasn't led a lap, but he is on the move, running third. He's led a lot of laps here before, though, in an ARCA race, so he knows how to get her done at Rockingham. Let's look at these speeds at the line. Watch how fast Logano is. Over a half a mile an hour, faster than our leader, Kyle Larson. Turn the fastest lap. Joey Logano, he's closing the gap on that 98 of Johnny Sauter. Sauter's not going to make it easy to get by, that's for sure. And that could dictate how, whether or not Joey Logano will be able to catch 
Kyle Larson. As they come out, turn four. Good thing Joey Logano for, moving to the high side. Good thing for Logano. Sauter is dedicated to the bottom, so Joey knew, knew that, so drove far. to the top side. He's going to clear Sauter off turn two. He's running second, and the only truck ahead of him is right out his windshield. Less than seven laps remain. Is it enough time for Joey Logano to catch young Kyle Larson? Larson looking for his first ever Truck Series win. Joey Logano wants to be the spoiler today. These are going to be a long six laps for Kyle Larson. He knows his spotter is making him aware of the 19 truck coming. 1.4 seconds, the gap between Larson and Logano. We talked about two tenths of a second. If that was the case, he doesn't get there. No, and that last time by, Larson turned up the wick. He ran about a half of a tenth faster than Logano. Joey Logano. 26 at Talladega. His best finish in a truck. He's going to improve on that today. Two tenths that time for Logano. Two tenths quicker than Kyle Larson. He has five more laps. I love what Logano's doing, too. And down in turn one and two, he'd been running high. He lost a tenth a lap before. That time he went to the bottom, gained two tenths. He was back to the bottom again on that lap. Can he pull in on Larson? This time by four laps to go. You see the back end of that 19 getting sideways. He's given it everything he's got. Logano trying to close the gap. Four to go. Kyle Larson. Got a tenth and a half that lap. See what kind of traffic that Kyle Larson has to encounter. Easily by the 10 of Jennifer Jo Cobb. Laps winding down. Is it enough time for Joey Logano? This time by, it'll be three laps remaining. The gap was one second that separated these two. Has Joey Logano been able to close that gap? No. Last time by, a second. This time by, a second. Kyle Larson just three laps away from his first win in the truck series. Don't you want to win your first race? Well, no trouble. And the caution's going to come out. The 17 of Timothy Peters around the 39 involved in this Ryan C. And I think right that's going to give up. the advantage to Logano. Those pressure tires on a restart are going to be awfully hard for Kyle Larson to beat. Just saw Trent Owen shake his head on top of the pit box. Can't believe the caution comes out with just two to go. And it's Bubba Wallace. Darryl oh, Wallace Jr. That's a hard during their caution. He's over in turn number three. A lot of damage to that truck, both front and rear. Bubba was running just outside the top 10. And we're hearing that the nine of Ron Hornaday and the 54 of Bubba Wallace weren't playing nice on the track just moments ago. You Let's see, see some damage it. to the, there was some damage on the right front of that nine truck of Ron Hornaday. Well, that was well after the caution flew though. See a hole in the left front there. So let's look again at what brought the caution out. Timothy Peters on the inside of Ryan Sieg and just tried to come up the track and he didn't have Sieg cleared. Sieg, uh, nothing he could do there. He was just uh, holding his line. Here's the 9 and 54 That's just in front of these two. This, this is coming off of turn four and the accident with the 54 is going to happen all the way when they get to go in and turn number three it's after almost, the caution came out. The caution was out for almost a lap. See him going to work on that 17 of Timothy Peters. A lot of damage to the right front. Shut it off, shut it off. Yeah, it's blowing all everywhere, we're good. Okay, bud, sorry, man. And here's where this the is the lap before, this is the lap before because the 17 is still on the racetrack right side of the screen. Let's see if Bubba goes up the track and enforces Ron high. They're yes, he did. Door to door, and yeah, Bubba Wallace way up the racetrack. This, That's the, this is when the caution is out. The caution is out. And contact made by the nine. Wow. Sending the 54 into the wall. Remember, we saw at Texas a couple years ago Kyle Busch, motors, Kyle Busch driving his own truck and Ron Horner to having issues. That's Ron Horner and Kyle Busch's truck having issues. There's the caution. See the out. caution's out. Ron's ahead of Bubba. A little contact there. He runs him into the, the wall. Caution came out. He's contemplating his next move. And he just did his next move. And we saw the eyes 
watching the mirror. And this took place after the caution had come out. There was an initial bump to let yeah. him know that he wasn't happy with him. But well, then remember, Ron turned him into the outside wall. You remember when Kyle wrecked uh, Ron, right. they parked Kyle. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that wasn't the case here. You wreck somebody deliberately under caution. There isn't any room for that. Bubba used Ron up down into turn three. I won't argue that, but uh, that's a bit of yeah, pretty big a, difference to wrecking someone under caution. This was a retaliation after the caution had come out for at least a lap, right at a lap. We saw Ron bump him over in one and two. Let's listen to Ron's audio. Got the inside room. I got on the gauge and I got on the outside room. I didn't mean to put him in the fish like that. I rub him on the inside. Hmm. Well, if we hadn't been watching it, we could have maybe believed that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's what well, it's, it's in the eyes. Yeah. So NASCAR officials are going to be taking a look at the replays. They have every vantage point that we do. They will make a decision on what took place there. But again, the 17, Timothy Peters was into the wall. That brought the caution out initially. You and now we're hearing the tail end of the longest line. Right there. You go to the tail end of the longest line, as NASCAR has said. Well, that's going to cost him four spots is yeah. all. And that, that, that's really going to be pretty minimal considering what it what it could have been, truthfully. So we will have our first attempt at a green-white checker finish. Wow. And Joey Logano. That's been the big story as far as coming through the field. After restarting 16th, he made his way all the way up to battle with Kyle Larson for the lead. This is as good as it gets right here. Kyle Larson has been dominant, and he's done an amazing job with every everything we've asked him to do. He's done it today, but now he's got a guy beside him with cup experience, over 300 NASCAR starts on fresher tires. If he could pull this off, he's the man. Would you... Would you change up your strategy? Because we've seen Joey Logano make a lot of passes on the high side. Would you change your strategy up and go right side? Do you remember the move that Kyle put on Johnny Sauter down into turn one on the bottom of the racetrack? Yep. Johnny had him passed. He drove down into turn one so hard, but that truck stuck and he made the corner. No, I'm going to stick on the bottom. I'm going to try to run the two fastest laps of the day. And I understand what a challenge I'm facing. Kyle Larson has been so close to getting that first win. This was Phoenix a year ago. That's Brian Scott, the 18, on the outside on a late restart to get that win. Kyle Larson, oh so close, but that was his second, his best finish in second at Phoenix. Right. I looked up just a little while ago and I said, well, the 19's out of this one. They're, they're dropping back in a lap down. How in the world did you guys get back in this race? Uh, Joey hasn't given up yet. and uh, We're not over yet. We won't win it. Then I got the, got the best driver we could bring here. I'm just... Joey flew in last night red-eye to, to go here and run a race and try to win a truck race, and I'm just hoping we can pull it off for, for him and for everybody that uh, did this. Let's go watch the restart. All right, go get him. That's Brad Keselowski. He'll be behind this wheel of this truck later this year. Here we go. Ready to go green, guys. Kyle Larson green. on the inside. A great restart for Kyle Larson. Logano on the outside. How about Johnny Sauter? Can he pull up and mess with Logano long enough to let Larson get away? Kyle Larson now has a two-truck link lead as they go down the backstretch. Trying to stretch it out. Joey Logano now has cleared the 98. Clear, 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 clear. He is in second. We need to stay green till they get to the white flag. Coming out of turn number four. Out in front, Kyle Larson sees the white flag one more time around the rock. But here comes Logano. He's at the bottom of the racetrack. Kyle Larson goes up high. The gap is closed as they come out of two. We've seen a lot of passes at Rockingham through the years off of turn number four. There's so many different lines down here. Joey's going to go high. Kyle low. What line will work? Can Joey Logano get the run off four? Coming out of turn number four, the momentum with the 19. He moves to the inside. Kyle Larson's going to win at Rockingham. Woo! What a great finish. What an amazing job by that oh, yeah, young man. Good job, guys. Kyle Larson gets his first career win in just his fifth Camping World Truck Series start. And he did it in amazing fashion. His restart was perfect. He ran those two perfect laps he had to run in order to hold off the more experienced, the fresher tires. I'm telling you, that was amazing. And how about holding off 
Joey Logano coming out of turn number two when Logano was right there racing for that lead. An amazing job. An amazing job by Joey Logano, too. Not one lap of practice in that Brad Keselowski truck. Comes here, qualifies in the top ten, and I'm telling you, almost pulled it off. Let's hear from the winning crew chief. He's with the right. Yeah, that'll be Trent Owens. Boy, what a finish. We always have good ones here at Rockingham, but your driver had come on a few minutes ago and said, boy, Joey got lucky on that one, and somehow he pulled it off. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can't believe they made that pit call and got that lucky, but... Uh, you know, Kyle did a great job today. Uh, I, I feel <laughs> blessed to be working with such a great driver. It, it's been a lot of fun so far this season. Uh, dominant day here in Rockingham. My son's name's on the door. It's just, it's an honor for our family. Um, Got to thank Steve Turner and Harry Scott for uh, setting up this event. Really special. All right, congratulations. That's Trent Owens. We're going to head to Victory Lane and hear from Kyle Larson, a winner today here at Rockingham. <laughs> and Ray, you might have heard Michael tell I, us. I, was, I don't think I've seen that. <laughs> he was Good doing job. his burnout without the steering wheel on. He was holding it out the window. He was letting everyone know, I'm going to, uh, I'm doing the burnout without the steering wheel this time. How special is that for the crew chief? We talked yeah. about Johnny Sauter's crew chief, Joe Shear, last week winning on his birthday. And now Trent Owens wins with his son's name on that truck. What a special event. What a special day uh, for Kyle Larson and that whole Turner Motorsports team. We're Turner showing. Scott. We're showing the nine of Ron Hornaday. Uh, NASCAR has said, we want to chat with you. So they are calling him to the NASCAR hauler. He will head over there to talk with series director Chad Little. Obviously about the contact that took place on the racetrack between he and Darrell Wallace Jr. Wife Lindy there. And the other party involved in that issue, Darrell Wallace Jr. standing by with Herman. Well, Bubba, just out of the infield care center, first of all, are you okay? And tell us what happened on the racetrack with you in the nine truck. I'm better now that I have my coat. Um, I don't know. Early in the race, I'm running the top, and he's, uh, let's see it right here. Just flat out, Raxus. Just, just turn us. So, had, had there been any contact prior to that on the racetrack? Uh, early in the race, like I said, I was running the top, and he couldn't get by me, so he'd do what he had to do. But it was too early to force the issue. I mean, right here, I'm three laps to go. I'm trying to get my line, or take his line away, because I knew he wouldn't give me the top. So, move up. Oh, did he hit the fence? No. So, it, I think it was pretty clean to me. So, it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, we come out here and. I seem like a veteran out of the rookie out of that situation, so it's okay. Uh, we knew we were here. We uh, a little missed it all weekend. We were a little tight, loose, and just couldn't really pinpoint it, but uh, I can't thank Toyota Care, Coca-Cola, Oakley, everybody that worked hard on this truck. Jerry, it's, it's unfortunate for these guys because they worked their tail off to, you know, three weeks in a row to get this truck ready, and uh, now it's junked. So it'll be all right. We're going to Kansas. Uh, new track for me. It'll be fun. A lot of composure shown by Bubba Wallace. Thanks, Jeremy. Joey Logano, oh so close, as he talks with his Sprint Cup colleague and owner in this yeah, situation, yeah. Brad Keselowski. You see the 30 truck, so dominant today, 187 laps led by Kyle Larson. Let's let him get out of the truck. Let's go to Ray. Here he comes. He's the winner of the North Carolina Education Lottery 200. Cheer wine flying everywhere. That's going to put some red stains around. Kyle. Awesome truck right from the very soon as you set into this thing in practice. You knew it was good, but how worried were you about facing off with Joey Logano there on the final couple laps? Well, I, I knew when I was lapping him there with, I don't know, 60 or so to go, I figured he had to be on a different strategy. And then I saw him get the lucky dog, and I, you know, I, I knew he had to be on new tires. So I was definitely worried, and I could see him getting closer and closer in the mirror. I was just hoping we could get to the white, and, uh, and we got that yellow with just a couple to go. And, you know, I'm usually not the best on restart, so I was uh, you know, surprised I got that good of a start. But you know, I just got to thank all these guys on the Turner Scott Motorsports team. Uh, it's cool to win with Autism Speaks on the truck, and uh, you know, especially because Trent, his son Gray, has autism. So uh, you know, I wish Gray was here with us to, to hang out and, and have fun, but uh, I'm pretty happy. You guys race all over the country. Last year you won more than 30 races, but where does this one stack up on your accomplishment list? Man, this is right up there with those outlaw wins I got. So, uh, man, this is, uh, this is really special and just want to thank all the fans for, uh, you know, coming out and watching this. And you know, I hope all the fans at home enjoyed it, too. So 
Uh, can't wait to get back in a truck. Congratulations, Kyle Larson, victorious today, driving truck number 30 right here at Rockingham. Now let's get back to Hermie Sadler. Well, thank you, Ray. What a couple days it's been for Joey Logano. Solid run at Texas last night. And this race today was all over the place, front to the back, to the front, to the back. Tell us about the last restart, coming home second. Nah, I just got beat. Um, I was ready for him to do something on the restart, and um, he didn't do what I expected him to do. <laughs> and uh, spun my tires, and uh, cost uh, these guys a race. But um, I went at a good job getting this car better throughout the whole day. Um, we had a loose wheel, went down a lap, uh, got the lucky dog, and we still had that set of stickers, and that really played out in our favor. Um, and then we started really fast on a lot of cars. It was a lot of fun. Um, but just uh, I thought when that caution came out, I was like, man, okay, this is right where I want to be. I was a couple tenths faster than, than Kyle there and uh, just got beat. My fault. Um, but uh, we were going to Kansas next weekend with the same track, or not the same track, but same team. And um, so we're looking forward to that. I want to thank all the guys, um, all the guys at, at Reese Toe and, and uh, you know, Coleman Presley for helping setting this thing up for me. Uh, I went a great job this weekend. Joel Ligano comes home second. Hey, Charming. We heard Kyle Larson say, I can't wait to get back in a truck. There is rumor that he might run at Eldora. Oh, that's on dirt, and he's really good at that. Ram Gutson Glory from Rockingham Speedway. Got to look at the 30. Showing a lot of guts on this final restart. Taking on a cup regular from Joey Logano. And he ends up seeing the glory at the end. He talks about not being very good on restarts. I thought he was flawless today on restarts. Well, every restart, it was he was flawless from the word go. And you know what I liked the most about it? Joey Logano said, I thought I knew what he was going to do, and he did something different. That, you got to mix it up if you're going to win one of these babies on a restart, and he did just that. Let's go back to follow up on the story between Hornaday and Bubba Wallace Jr. with Hermie. Well, Ron Hornaday, welcome back to the garage. Some contact with you in the 54 on the racetrack. From your perspective, what went on? Well, I mean, earlier in the race, he just coming to with, with three or four laps to go. He just drives, drives straight. He, there was a corner coming up there, not on the outside of him, and uh, got up in the marbles, got in the fence a little bit, and then the yellow. I didn't know the yellow was out, and I got down in there and started racing, got on the back straightaway, and he slowed up, and then I ran into him a little bit. And then down the back, I went over to hit his tire, and I don't know if he swerved and hit his brakes on me or whatever, but I turned him in the fence, and I, I feel like a total idiot. So, got to apologize to Rick Wren and all them guys because uh, they work hard on their trucks, and we work hard on ours, and I, I don't race that way, so. Uh, you know, they're racing me hard lately, uh, these rookies, and I'm learning, learning how to race them now, you know, because earlier he picked me up down the back straightaway and tried to drive me in over my head already. So I, I don't know. I just, uh, I, feel, I feel like an idiot for wrecking him. But uh, snug all day, but uh, we'll get it better. It's Ron Horn today. Thanks, Ernie. I want to take a look at our leave points. Johnny Sauter doesn't get three in a row, but he does get a top five finish here at Rockingham. It's Ron Horn today, back to fourth now. Ron, Matt Crafton. Talk about, Matt talks about Thor Sports racing for a championship this year, and they're setting, setting pretty here early in the season. One and three, and we can't discount Jeff Burton winning the pole here and a top ten finish once again for him in the first three races. Three of our drivers in the top five with career best finishes, Kyle Larson, Joey Logano, and Chase Elliott, who ended up with a top five. Didn't disappoint. We knew tires were going to be an issue. We knew youth versus experience, and it ended up being youth getting the first win of his career Kyle Larson, after a dominant performance, able to hold off young Joey Logano, Kyle Larson in victory lane for the first time in the Camping World Truck Series. 